so this book right here today arrived and I always like to share the points of light and any fun tidbits and maybe give you a reason to pick up magazines because magazines are a rare art form if you will anyway this magazine here is Harlem's Jazz Age, Age reminisce the stories that shape our lives it's the October November 2020 issue they carry they cover so many interesting things in this book besides Harlem's Jazz Age, The War of the Worlds, Vintage Halloween, and The Peanuts Gang Turned 70. So, let's go ahead and see what lies inside, shall we? Ah, Trivial Pursuits. That's one thing that always catches my eye. I love quizzes. I love like the, the Reader's Digest when they give you the word and then you have to figure it out with a meaning. I think that's so much fun. This one just happens to be the country music expands range. Now I'm going to read you what it says, even the questions. You write down your answers, and at the end of this, I'm going to cover the answers to this quiz and the Peanuts Gang quiz, so we're going to have fun. The Country Music Expands Range. The Country Music Hall, Hall of Fame was born in 1961, and though its first three inductees, Hank Williams, Fred Rose, and Jimmy Rogers, are all honored posthumously, their influence is already inspiring a generation of rising female stars. Sing out the names of these future Hall of Famers on page 13 of the October November 2020 reminiscence magazine. This is question one. Her 1961 cover of Willie Nelson's quote crazy end quote changed the sound of country music. She's also the first woman elected to the Hall of Fame in 1973. Got your answer? I did. Number two. It wasn't God who made honky-tonk angels. Made her a star in 1952. That's number two. And that was, it wasn't God who made honky-tonk angels, in case you couldn't figure out my singing. Number three. Well, I was born a coal miner's daughter. This singer autobiography inspired a 1980 movie by the same name starring actress Sissy Spacek. Coal Miner's Daughter. Number three. Number four. The singer-songwriter won her first Grammy with her hit single, Here You Come Again. And that was Here You Come Again. Number four. Number five. George Jones joined her, and this is her picture. On I Was Country, when country wasn't cool. Number six, her 1968 song, Stand My Young Man, hit number one on the country charts and number 19 on the pop charts. Number seven, this red hair stars claims 22 number one singles and 19 gold platinum and multi-platinum albums. That one actually threw me. I've got to, I, I will be honest. I was thinking, okay, reminisce. It's a throwback to the past, right? You wouldn't think, I'll give you a little hint, modern. But it was a modern singer in the Reminisce magazine. To me, it was modern. Maybe not to y'all, but to me, it was modern. Okay. Now, if you wrote down your seven answers to those questions, we're moving forward. To the next paperclip. Oh, these are so cool. I found these items in here. They put the spotlight on items they have found. The first one is slice of the past. Thigh blacksmiths make curved chef moon knife according to the traditional sword making method. It cuts through coconut shells and bones with ease for only $70 at the verculture.com. That's V R V E C U L T U R E dot com. Look at this weird looking knife.
Okay. The next part says harvest at home. Lovely leftovers of food grade silicone super cubes perfectly proportioned to freeze servings of soup, sauce, broth, or other leftovers for heating up later. It's only $20 at williams-sonoma.com. How awesome is that? Okay. Small fry tools. Pro quality chefs and tools are sized for kids' hands, so all chefs will be able to make short work of kitchen duties and big meals. $50 at the kalamatakaskitchen.com. And that's K as in Ken, A L as in Larry, A M as in Mary, A T as in Tom. A, S is in Sam, K is in Kite, I is in Ice, T is in Tom, C is in Cat, H is in Hunter, E is in Egg, N is in Nancy, dot com. And I'll show you the next part here. Make, freeze, take, and eat. Taste of home pretty stoneware baking dish is the equivalent of the Swiss Army knife for holiday dishes. It's versatile and portable. It goes seamlessly from freezer to oven to table. $33 at Amazon, dot com. And I thought those were neat little things to share with you. Moving forward. <sighs> ah, here's the next quiz. How well do you know Charlie Brown and the gang? This is better known as pop culture in the retro play. Okay. Uh, by Michelle Wastrowski, and I hope I mis I I'm, I didn't I hope I didn't mispronounce. I hope I pronounced it right. Sorry. On October second, nineteen fifty, Charles M. Schultz, the Peanuts comic strip, began running in seven daily newspapers and launching a cultural phenomenon that act eventually embraced toys, books, TV, and collectibles. It is even credited with inspiring a psychological concept of quote security blanket end quote. The Peanuts gang was a big part of growing up for most of us, that from the Sunday funnies to the annual broadcast of A Charlie Brown's Christmas. What about Schultz's lovable crew has struck you with all these years? They want you to ponder that question. It's not a trivia question. Now, here comes the trivia questions. And I hope you write down your answers. I'm going to read the multiple choice answers as well. I'll try to go as slow as possible. And at the end of number five, I will showcase this page. Number one, Charles Schultz, Sparky to his friends, had the title for his strip, but it was changed to Peanuts, which he never really liked. What, what, blah, blah. what did Schultz call his creation? A, Snoopy and the Gang. B, The Life of Charlie Brown. C, Good Grief. D, Little Folks. Again, A, Snoopy and the Gang, B, Life of Charlie Brown, C, Good Grief, D, Little Folks. Number two, shortly after the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., school teacher Harriet Glickman wrote Schultz to suggest adding a black character. Who is this character? A, Freddie Armstrong, B, Fritz Armstrong, F R I T Z is in zebra Armstrong, C Franklin Armstrong, or D Felix Armstrong. Again, A Freddie Armstrong, B Fritz F R I T Z like zebra Armstrong, C Franklin Armstrong, or D Felix F E L I X like xylophone Armstrong. Number three. How many TV specials were created around the Peanuts? A, 45, B, 11, C, 33, or D, 26? Again, A, 45, B, 11, C, 33, or D, 
26. How many new strips did Schultz draw in his lifetime? Was it A, 20,276, B, 13,891, C, 19,462, D, 17,897. Again, the choices. A, 20,276, B, 13,891, C, 19,462, or D, 17,897. And now, the last question, or not the last question, I wish. We got nine more, uh, I mean, well, four more after this one. So, number five, what sitcom star from the 1970s portrayal Charlie Brown in the 1967 New York stage production of You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown? A, Gary Berghoff, B, John Ritter, C, Ron Howard, D, John Travolta. Again, A, Gary Berghoff, B, John Ritter, C, Ron Howard, or D, John Travolta. So I'll show you the questions now before we continue on. Okay, now we're going to hit question six through nine, and that's the end of the quiz after six through nine. Number six, Schultz's dog Spike inspired the character of Snoopy, who first appeared on October 4th of 1950. Schultz wanted to call the beagle something else, but another comic canine used that name. What was it? Snout on A, B, Honker, C, Sniffy, or D, Nosy. Again, A, Snout, B, Honker, C, Sniffy, or D, Nosy. Number seven. Although Snoopy's sidekick first appeared in the 1967, he wasn't given the name until... 1970. What is he named for? A. Schultz's childhood pet. B. The Woodstock, Woodstock Music Art and Fair. C. Woodstock, Illinois. D. Joni Mitchell's song, quote unquote, Woodstock. Again, A. Schultz's childhood pet. B. The Woodstock Music Art and Fair. C. Woodstock, Illinois, or D. Joni Mitchell's song, Woodstock. 8. In the 1981 special, It's Magic, Charlie Brown, the interior of Snoopy's house proved to be well-appointed living space with a pool table, books, a laboratory, and a painting of which famous artist? A. Claude Monet, B. Vincent Van Gogh, C. Auguste Renoir, or D. Salvador Dalle. Again, A. Claude Monet, B. Vincent Van Gogh, or C. Auguste Renoir, or D. Salvador Dalle. On number nine, Snoopy once had a fiance who appeared in the 1985 TV special Snoopy's Get Married, Charlie Brown. What's her name? A. Trixie, B. Guinevere, C. Lassie, D. Lucy. Again, A. Trixie, B. Genevieve, C. Lassie, or D. Lucy. I'm going to show you the questions now. Make your choices. Okay. Now they show a picture down here of Charles Schultz who poked fun at the hardships of growing up in Peanuts, which debuted in October of 1950. 
Okay, moving forward. Okay. I'm just going to briefly touch on this because it's a long-winded uh, retro replay of the keepsakes. This is the pails, which they call paper mache lanterns, and they were sold at five of dimes, five and dimes, like little dime stores, the weeks leading up to Halloween. And uh, they were just lanterns that shed light on Halloween for the uh, era of children back in the elders' days. Isn't that kind of cool yet spooky? I thought I'd share that with you. Now to have some real fun. I always like the kids when they come to the door with their different creative costumes, especially the homemade one. It takes time and, and you really have to think about those before you uh, go out to trick or treat. Look at this. This was taken, it says, in 1985. Her daughter Chelsea won a prize at school for her Charmin costume. Her earrings were miniature toilet rolls. We like to think Mr. Whipple would have approved. Connie Reader in Media, Pennsylvania. It says, please don't squeeze the Charmin. Isn't that adorable? Just freaking adorable. And creative. Okay, we're going to turn over here. Look at these pictures from the past, back in time, just briefly. And uh, this was... Uh, Mom and Dad went out to a Halloween costume party that he stayed home with his brothers, Jeff the Clown and Joe the Skeleton, to hand out candy in 1957. Look at that. Adorable. We got a skeleton, a clown, and it looks like an astronaut. Okay, it says, Handle with Care. Holding a paper mache jack-o'-lantern, his first Halloween in 1948. Still uh, my favorite holiday, Julie Natalie says. Look at that. Adorable. Diaper ingenuity. Mom used cloth diapers to dress his the older brother, back, Lewis Young Jr., as a bunny in 1944. Dad was serving as a CB in the South Pacific, Connie Young Reader said. Adorable. And this one down here was really creative. Ghoul's Night Out. In 1958, I was a witch carrying a bag of trick-or-treat and dressed up with Betty Boshed, Julie Rogers, Kathy Gale, and ba Barbie Botchlin from Vicki Langwell in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Look at this picture. We got one, two hot dogs. Uh, looks like a little sorceress. Uh, we've got, uh, looks like a maybe a genie over there of some sort. And it looks like in the middle we've got uh, a little boy dressed up as uh, I guess uh, like a ninja kind of adorable and cute it's kind of fun to go back and look at the old days okay now are you ready for the answers to the quiz and to find out how I did and hopefully you did well and if not it's okay don't take it personal okay number one on the trivia pursuits for the country music was Patsy Cline. Number two was Kitty Wells. Number three was Loretta Lynn. Number four was Dolly Parton. Number five was Barbara Mandrell. Six, Tammy Wynette. And number seven, threw me. I gotta show you my results. This was my results right here. I thought number seven was Dottie West. But number seven was Reba McIntyre. I'm like, are you serious? But it seems like poor Dottie West is not being mentioned in much these days. Just saying. Uh, Peanuts quiz page is on 46. Now, here's how I did. Not that well. I only had two right. Hopefully you have more than what I had. Number one was the letter A. And number two is the letter C. Number three, the letter A. Four, the letter D. Five, the letter A. Six, the letter C. Seven, the letter B. Eight, the letter B. And nine, the letter B. Again, one, 
A, two, C, three, A, four, D, five, A, six, C, seven, B, eight, B, and nine, B. That was kind of fun, wasn't it? Something we have never done. Look at this back thing here. And it says, Dad made this for my sister Mary S Susan in 10 in 1969 out of old ad displays from the liquor store where he worked. And that's Robert Hurley from Baltimore, Maryland. And that is your Reminisce magazine, which we had some so much fun with, the October-November issue. And uh, I urge you all to go pick up that magazine or order it today. Get a great subscription right now. So that's all of the magazines we're going to do tonight. Next up, I'm going to share the book reading with you. So you don't want to go anywhere. Stay.